Hey guys, welcome to another episode of All American Cooking, where today I'm going to show you how to pickle your own beef for corned beef. That's right, St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner. Need at least 10 to 14 days to make this happen. So rather than buying the store-bought corned beef, go ahead and get yourself a fresh brisket, bring it on home, and follow these steps for easy, delicious, authentic corned beef. Let's get into it. And there's our kid. The key ingredient in corned beef is beef brisket. I've got a 17 and a half pound brisket here. I'm not going to make the entire thing. That would be crazy. What I am going to do is I'm going to cut a section of this part off. This is called the flat. And this part, this is called the point. I'm going to leave that uh, in my freezer. I'm going to wrap it up and smoke it for another time. Uh, we don't have to trim anything. We want to leave this fat cap on the point. Uh, has more fat running through it than the flat. Uh, so when it comes time to smoking that, I may trim some of that fat down because if I turn it over this way, you can see that there's a nice ribbon of fat right through the point. But we'll get into all the sections of a brisket when it comes time for smoking that thing uh, in a couple of months, maybe even a couple of weeks. Right now, I just want to concentrate on this flat. So I'm going to pat it, make sure it's patted nice and dry with the paper towel, make sure my hands are nice and dry so that I don't lose control of my knife. And with a very sharp knife, we're just going to pick a spot right here and just cut right through this bad boy. Isn't that beautiful? So once I have this cut, uh, we're gonna set it off to the side. I'm gonna wrap the point and the remaining part of the flat, the, the, the bulk of the brisket and we'll come back and we'll make the brine so that we can turn this beautiful brisket flat into corned beef. So now it's time to make the brine, which will turn this beef brisket into corned beef. We're gonna start with two quarts of water. Very simple, pour it into a large uh, pan or a Dutch oven. And a brine is different from a marinade because it's usually a liquid salt solution with some sugar and some other flavoring agents to uh, just enhance the flavor of everything. So I've got a cup of kosher salt that's gonna go in. We're gonna follow that with a half cup of brown sugar. Light brown sugar is fine. Next up, I've got two tablespoons of saltpeter, also known as potassium nitrate. Uh, you probably will have to order this online. I'll leave a link below. Next up, I've got a tablespoon of yellow mustard seeds. We'll go ahead and bounce those little balls in there. And we're gonna follow that up with one tablespoon of black peppercorns. Get those in there. Now we're gonna take a cinnamon stick and we're gonna break it up into uh, small pieces. Uh, just with your hands is fine. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be all the same size. Just break it up into uh, several pieces and we'll go ahead and throw all of those broken up pieces of cinnamon stick into the pool and let them uh, sit in there and add more flavor to everything that's going to be going on. This is a great recipe. Uh, this corned beef comes out very authentic, better than the store-bought. Now we've got uh, a teaspoon of juniper berries. And we're going to follow that up with a little better than a half teaspoon of whole cloves along with a half teaspoon of whole allspice berries. Then we're gonna take some dried bay leaves and we're just gonna break them up with our hands. Just put them all in the palm of your hand and smush them all around, get a bunch of little pieces out of there. Now, if you have fresh bay leaves, that's okay. You could use those, just tear them up into small pieces. Again, they don't have to be identical size pieces. We're just breaking them up getting all the kids in there. And then we're gonna finish it up with one half teaspoon of ground ginger. So I will mix all of this to combine it. And then we're gonna go over to the stove top and over medium high heat, uh, bring it not quite to a simmer, basically just gonna heat it up and stir occasionally until all of that salt and sugar dissolves and your brine solution is clear. So after about 10 minutes or so, this is what we've got. You can see most of the sugar and salt are completely dissolved. The brine solution is relatively clear. 
All of these other bits are going to continue to float around in there. The heat has now turned off. So now we want to cool this down. We're also going to add uh, more liquid to it to uh, dilute it a little bit. I'm going to come in with uh, probably, I want to say, maybe about four cups of uh, ice. So uh, I've got a bag of ice here that I had used earlier. It's probably just four cups in there. So we're going to go ahead and pour all that ice in there. And we'll stir it around until the ice is completely melted. And once the ice is melted and the brine solution is cool enough to the touch, your brine is done and it's time to add it to the beef to make corned beef. So now it's just a matter of pouring the brine into a bag that contains your brisket. Uh, this is a two quart, I'm sorry, a two gallon Ziploc bag. Uh, you can find them at most grocery stores or uh, big box stores, or you can look online. Uh, I've got it sitting in a bowl that uh, helps keep the, make sure that the brisket is completely submerged. If uh, you don't want to do it in a bowl, you can also do it in a high walled casserole dish or brownie pan. Uh, anything that it will fit in so that it sits as evenly as possible and keeps the entire brisket submerged. So uh, we just zip it up. We squeeze out as much of the air as we possibly can. Don't worry if there are still air bubbles in there. The most important thing is to make sure that your brisket is completely uh, covered by the solution. And uh, this whole thing will go into the refrigerator for a minimum of 10 days. I like to do it for at least two weeks. Uh, we're going to keep it in there and make sure that it stays covered just, you know, every day. Uh, just give it a little squish around, turn it upside down, make sure it stays covered. And we'll see you in about two weeks to turn this into a beautiful corned beef dinner. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So now you know how to corn your own beef. Uh, come St. Patrick's Day. I'll be shooting a video showing you how to prepare your corned beef a couple of different ways, as well as how to make a delicious Reuben style pastry egg roll type dish. It's absolutely fantastic. Homemade little Thousand Island dressing on the side. You're gonna love it. So I uh, hope everybody is having a great year so far and uh, we'll look forward to a happy St. Patrick's Day with some amazing food. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Share this video with your friends so that they too can make amazing corned beef and so that they don't have to eat boring food. Thanks guys, we'll see you.